This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. So Fallout 4 has a wide variety of weapons to choose from. Miniature chainsaws, nuclear rocket launchers, cannonball launchers, submachine guns, magnums, and more. Uh, something that I haven't really talked about yet are the various grenades and mines available to the player to use to kill or dispatch various enemies. Some of these will be a surprise, while others are going to be pretty self-explanatory and obvious. These will be the top 7 best ballistic and energy grenades and mines in Fallout 4. Let's go ahead and start with number 7, the Hallucigen Gas Grenade. The Hallucigen Gas Grenade makes all NPCs in the Blast Radius Frenzied meaning they will attack whatever and whoever is closest to them. This also makes it so that even allied enemy forces will attack each other as well. This effect can be quite useful in places like Quincy Ruins, where some of the enemies have access to like really powerful weapons that can kill other enemies easily. After all, uh, Baker has a fat man and a missile launcher, while Clint wields power armor. The biggest downside with hallucigen gas grenades is that the hallucigen gas canisters required to make them are extremely rare. In fact, there are only nine uh, hallucigen gas canisters that appear only at the hallucigen headquarters in downtown Boston. Now, if you are playing on the PC version of Fallout 4, uh, you will have the ability to spawn more hallucigen gas canisters or even hallucigen gas grenades uh, via console commands, allowing for an infinite number of hallucigen gas grenades. I definitely recommend messing around with these if you want to create riots in your local cities or settlements. Number six, the pulse grenade and mine. I'll go ahead and mention that as far as I know, the Institute EM Pulse Grenade doesn't drop anywhere in the game, uh, but it can be spawned via console commands. Uh, however, the Pulse Grenade and mine can be both crafted at a chemistry bench. Supposedly, Pulse Grenades are supposed to be more effective up against robot-type enemies and deal 150 pure energy damage. Uh, the only downside to dealing pure energy damage from a grenade is that the damage isn't boosted further by the Demolition Expert perk, which seems to only affect ballistic explosive type damage. It also requires one circuitry piece in order to craft, and in my opinion, at this point, you're better off crafting a better grenade on this particular list, or you could go ahead and use that one circuitry piece to craft a turret for one of your settlements. Uh, if worse comes to worse, though, if you did find one of these, you could just sell it and pocket the bottle caps, thanks to grenade and mines having a relatively high value to weight ratio. Number five, the cryogenic grenade and mine. Cryogenic grenades deal 100 ballistic base damage and up to 201 ballistic damage after maxing out the demolition expert perk. While it deals less damage than a standard fragmentation grenade, cryogenic grenades still deal a decent amount of damage and also slightly, quote, freeze enemies, making them move significantly slower. Uh, this movement speed penalty can make a difference up against enemies with high movement speeds or enemies that primarily have melee attacks, as it takes them much longer to get closer to you, meaning that you could fill them with more bullets or deal more attacks to them. Cryogenic grenades and mines can also be crafted, and unlike the pulse grenade, which requires circuitry components, the cryogenic grenade requires relatively common resources like acid, adhesive, aluminum, nuclear material, and a spring. The perk requirements are also relatively low, as Demolition Expert only needs to be at level 2, and you need a science perk of level 1. Uh, overall, this is going to be a significant step up from most grenades in the game, uh, like your baseball grenades, your Molotov cocktails, and while it's not the best grenade in the game, the ability to affect an enemy's movement speed uh, while dealing damage is a nice feature. Number four, the fragmentation grenade. So there's nothing really that special about this particular grenade. It simply explodes and deals damage. Uh, it should be mentioned though that this grenade deals the most damage of any standard grenade in Fallout 4, and that includes things like the baseball grenade, Molotov cocktail, cryogenic grenade, etc. Uh, the fragmentation grenade's base damage is 150 and caps out at 301 with a fully maxed out demolition expert perk. 
Uh, in fact, I would say that the fragmentation grenade can be crafted from even more common materials than the cryogenic grenade, uh, which include adhesive, aluminum, fertilizer, oil, and a spring. Uh, also, like the cryogenic grenade, you only need a demolition perk of two uh, without any need for investment in the science perk. Uh, honestly, I think the standard frag grenade is the best way to go when compared to something like the baseball grenade, uh, which specifically requires a baseball to craft it and doesn't deal quite as much damage as a standard frag grenade. Uh, if you don't want to craft a frag grenade, uh, there are slews of these that you can find on like dead enemies or in chests in various places throughout all of Fallout 4. Number three, the plasma grenade and mines. The plasma grenade and mine deal a mix of 150 ballistic and 150 energy damage. However, if you have the demolition expert perk maxed out, you can upgrade the ballistic damage portion to 301 while the energy damage remains the same. In my opinion, the plasma grenade and mine is essentially like putting one of the best weapon types in Fallout 4 into both a grenade and mine form. Uh, while it's unfortunate that the Demolition Expert perk doesn't seem to improve the energy damage at all, you're still getting one of the best grenades in Fallout 4. Now, the biggest downside is that the crafting requirements are extremely high and require relatively uncommon crafted components. Uh, on the perk side of things, you'll need a Demolition Expert perk uh, completely maxed out and a Science perk level of 3. Uh, you will also need adhesive, aluminum, circuitry, nuclear material, and a spring in order to craft one. Uh, like I mentioned previously with the pulse grenade and mine, you're really better off saving your circuitry to build turrets for your settlements in my opinion. Uh, also provided you have allegiance with the Minutemen, you can use the Minutemen faction grenade to have precision artillery strikes rain down on your enemies, and from my experience that actually deals a lot more damage. Problem is you have to configure radios and stuff like that. Ultimately, it's up to you whether you'll want to use this or not, uh, but I think the next grenade or mine on this list uh, will surprise you. Number two, the bottle cap mine. The bottle cap mine deals 300 ballistic base damage, but that can be boosted to 601 with help from the demolition expert perk being fully maxed out. Uh, this is a very powerful mine to use in Fallout 4, and I've found that I've actually almost killed my own characters a couple of times while improperly judging the size of the blast radius with this thing. Um, another cool perk of the bottle cap mine is after it explodes, you receive some bottle caps. Um, and what's also great about the bottle cap mine is that it can be crafted as soon as you achieve the first level of the demolition expert perk. And another plus is that most of the ingredients or crafting supplies you'll need are relatively common and include things like adhesive, fertilizer, oil, and even steel. Um, the biggest downside though is like the baseball grenade, you need a very specific and somewhat rare item to craft bottle cap mines, and that is the vault tech lunchbox. In fact, if you ever see a vault tech lunchbox, I recommend you store it and or convert it into a bottle cap mine as soon as possible. If you can get your hands on a couple of bottle cap mines, you can pretty much kill most human enemies in the game with about two to three hits. Number one, the Nuka Grenade and Mine. While Nuka Mines are slightly more common, Nuka Grenades are fairly rare and cannot be crafted like many of the other grenades on this particular list. Uh, without a doubt, both the Nuka Grenade and Mine are the most powerful grenade and or mines in Fallout 4, and really, these things can be best described as a slightly weaker Fat Man launcher uh, just in, like, grenade form. Now, according to the Fallout Wiki, both are most commonly found at hostile Children of Adam locations, uh, the Nuka Mine can be found in some more places, but the best places to find Nuka Grenades in particular are at both the Jalber Brothers Disposal and Kingsport Lighthouse. Uh, also keep in mind that for Kingsport Lighthouse, uh, it's available as a settlement once you've cleared out of the hostile Children of Adam members. Uh, both the Nuka Grenade and Mine deal a mix of 300 ballistic damage and 100 radiation damage. Uh, the ballistic damage can be increased to 600 when maxed out with the Demolition Expert perk. Unfortunately, like the Pulse Grenade and the Plasma Grenade, um, you can't improve the radiation damage via the Demolition Expert perk, 
and the nuclear physicist perk doesn't affect the radiation damage at all. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.